Hello, everyone. This is Paul Lucas inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions. Proudly, we hail. And now, another Proudly We Hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, starring Paul Lucas, and presented transcribed coast-to-coast in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Paul Lucas. Thank you, Kenneth Bancroft. Our play is entitled The Last Track. The scene, the far western part of our own United States. The time today. Our story, a tale of a chase across the desert. Mistaken identity and the end of a legend. Our first act certain will rise after this important message. Can you hold down a man's job? If your answer is yes, there's a man's job waiting for you in our rapidly expanding United States Army. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and get all the details today. And now with your star, Paul Lucas, in the role of Stefan Donner, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Last Trap. <laughs> gotten away with living a double life. To all but a handful, he was Stefan Donner, the great composer and piano virtuoso, the man with no political beliefs who took no sides and played where he was invited, east or west. But to the handful, Stefan Donner was an extraordinarily capable agent who hid his daring actions behind his musical talent. To succeed at playing this dangerous dual role for so long, Donner had accomplished the unusual, but he knew in such a game... It couldn't go on forever. Are you there? Uh, what? Well, I'm sorry, but, but... Who is it, Ring? I don't know, sir. Some bloke who wants you. Who is this speaking? Well... Uh, I'll take it, Ring. Hello? Donner! This is, this is Hans Kruczek. You probably don't remember me. You saved my life back when... Why, Hans, of course. What are you doing in America? Do you live here? You must Donner, come and... Donner, Bill, I feel I owe you something, and that's why I'm calling. They know, Donner. They know. Donner, did you hear me? Yes, Hans. I heard you. You are sure? Positive. I was there when you've been a spy for the best since the end of the war. Do you know how they found out? No, 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 I can't talk longer. What do they plan? To kidnap you, I believe, and take you back. They want you alive. I warned you, Donna. We're fit. Good luck. They know him. They've uncovered us. We've got to clear out of this time. Oh, but, sir, wh- wh- why don't we just call our friend in Washington? He'll take care of everything and... We don't have time. What? They plan to kidnap us and take us back. Oh, no. Look around you, Ring. Except for this resort, we are literally in the middle of nowhere. If we stayed here, they'd find a way to get us before help could arrive. Call and have the car brought around at once. Turn north at the fork, sir? No. Keep right on, Ring. But this highway leads to Denver, won't they? Now, according to the map, it also leads to an airport. We can't stay with this car. Once they find we've left Mountain View, they start watching us all the highway. That's not a hard job in a country like this. I think we'll be traveling on foot very soon. Uh, From the frying pan into the fire, eh? It would seem so, sir. Do we have water? There's a canvas bag full in the back. 
No sense in wasting it on the car. Ah, never mind, Rink. That's the end of it. Now let's hold the Council of War. Our best bet is to keep heading north. With the help of the sun, we can do that. At night, the North Star will be our guide. We'll take nothing with us but the map and water bag and our guns. What are you looking at? Look up there. Buzzard. Already. If our red-headed comrades are anywhere about, those black devils will have them to find us. Let's get started. <laughs> It turns so cold. Yes, we should have read the guidebook. It's clouding up, sir. How are we going to keep heading north? The only thing we can do is focus our eyes on some subject ahead of us. And when we get to it, pick out another. I'll take the water back for a while. Uh, it's all right, sir. It helps keep my back warm. It's not heavy. That's not very good news. Oh, I know. Sir, what are our, our plans once we get out of the Sahara? Well, any plans we have, we have rings are subject to immediate change. Uh, the fact that we didn't reach Denver today will put our friends in Washington wise to what has happened. They won't be able to keep it out of the papers or off the radio, and so there'll be a lot of people looking for it by morning. Our trouble will be recognizing who are our friends and who aren't. Likely we'll come to a farm or ranch house first. If we have a telephone, we'll use it and stay put until we are called for. And what about the people who own the place? Well, we'll tell them enough to make them realize we need their help and protection. Other than that, we can make no plans. They may not come out at all, Ring. Right now, I think we'd better concentrate on not going around in a circle. <laughs> Go on. Got to stop. Have to ring. Have to. No more water. Oh. Come on, man. Got to keep going. You can put him down again. Madam. Oh, thank God. You are an angel. Where did you come from? Here. Give him some water. Not too much. Drink. Here. Drink. Drink, man. Not too much. That's enough drink. The beautiful lady who I think is a mirage says not too much. May I? Thank you. I'll take the water. Yes, of course. May I ask you how you came to be here? I was looking for you. Looking for us? Do you know who we are? I, we heard you got in the way. I thought you might try it through here. You almost made it. Another three miles and you'd have hit the river. Uh, who are you? I'm Pat Rollins, if that's any of your business. What are you going to do with us, Miss Rollins? You should be able to figure that out. I'll take you back to the ranch and hold you there until they come for you. Until, until who comes for us? Three guesses. And she looks so, so American, sir. A regular cowgirl. All right, get on your feet. And just remember... I can shoot this, and I will if you make me. Well, Ring, time to arrive. Yes, sir. Now. <laughs> now, Miss Rollins, behave yourself. And you'll come to no harm. You, you. She nearly shot me, sir. By her hand. Leave her feet free. It's only three miles to the river. You won't get away. They'll get you. You're trapped. We'll take the horse, Ring. Miss Rollins, it seems a pity that you are one of them. You don't look the part, but then I suppose those are the kind of people they like. I should shoot you, but I could never bring myself to shoot a woman. Thank your lucky stars you are not a man. Don't try to follow us. One thing. Where does the river lead to? Follow it and find out. Well, it won't make much difference anyway. Goodbye, Miss Rollins. 
Thank you for the water and the horse. Get your hands up and stand right where you are. I'll meet it. All right, Pat. See if they have guns. Then get over here. Right. I'd like nothing better than to shoot the both of you. If I wasn't afraid of the consequences, I would. So if you want to keep breathing, don't do anything to make me change my mind. Looks like we've had it, sir. That's the way it looks, Frank. Paul Lucas, starring in the role of Stefan Donor in the proudly we hail production, The Last Trap, will return in just a moment for the second act. Next time you see a soldier of your United States Army, take a good look at the uniform he wears. That uniform is the mark of a man, the clear and visible sign that its wearer has come up to the mark. It's always been so. From the buff and blue uniforms of General Washington's Continental to the battle-worn uniforms of the combat soldiers of today, the United States Army insignia has been worn proudly by many generations of men. The man who wears this uniform needs help. The help of all young Americans who can measure up to the mark of a man. Join him now. Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and list today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Paul Lucas, in the role of Stefan Donner, we present the second act of The Last Trap. Sit down. Those chairs there. Pat, bring the pickup around. What are you going to do with them, Dick? I'll keep them company while you drive into town and get Travis. From the looks of it, you better hurry. There's a storm coming up. Are you sure you'll be all right alone? You shouldn't be moving around on that leg. Well, we'll tie him up first. We ought to get ourselves a nice reward out of this, sis. Uh, I don't care about that. I just want to get them back behind bars where they belong. Don't worry. Travis's jail will hold them until... Wait a minute. Did you say jail? Or... Sit down there and be quiet. Put your arms behind you. Get some rope, Pat. All right. Is it the police you are taking us to? Oh, cut the comedy. Please, I am not joking. Who do you think we are? Listen, wise guide. No, you don't understand. What is my name? What is his name? There's no use in trying any tricks. We've been hearing all about it on the radio since Tuesday. You're Kells and he's Stroberg, or vice versa. Kells? Stroberg? <laughs> I thought she looked too nice to be one of them, sir. Now, let's drop this nonsense. I'll get those arms behind those chairs. Now, wait. You've made a mistake, and we've made a mistake, too. If you reach inside my pocket, you'll find my wallet. It'll tell you who I am. Tie his hands, Pat, and tie them tight. All, all right. Tie my hands, but please listen. My name is Stefan Donner. This is Ring. Stefan we... Donner? Yes. Would either this fellow Kells or the other one talk as I do? Would either of them talk as Ring? What are you doing, Pat? Looking at his wallet. Here. There's a passport here, too. Dick, I, I think we've made a mistake. The picture's the same. I have, a, I have a look at mine, too, miss. Throw it over here. Stephen Donner. You're a musician, aren't you? A pianist. The best, Miss Rollins. Well, what were you doing out this there? This could be a phony. The picture could have been pasted in somehow. Untie his hands, Pat. So you're a pianist. All right. There's a piano there. Let's hear you play it. Gladly, sir. Gladly. Couldn't be killed. Say, I think I heard something on the news yesterday about Stefan Donna. They, they say he disappeared. It's screwy, sis. Okay, that's enough. All right, Mr. Donner, if that's your name. What were you doing wandering around in the desert, armed, and threatening to shoot my sister? Well, I'll do my best to explain. You'd better hurry, sir. I'm sure that plane spotted us just as we got here. <laughs> That is as much as I can tell you. I've got one question. Do you expect me to swallow it? I don't expect you to do anything, sir, but give me a chance to prove it's true. How? I see you have a telephone. Well, I remember hearing about you. You're the one who's so palsy with Joe's boys. 
Wouldn't surprise me if it was just the other way around. Now, look here, please. All I am asking you to do is to go into town, wherever that is, and call this number. Tell them what you like, and they'll tell you what, what to do. And in the meantime... Now, that plane that flew over just as we got here was probably out looking for us. If it was, then the people who want me know where I am, and that means they'll be paying you a visit. In another five minutes, it'll be raining so hard, nothing will be able to move over our road. Is there some place you can hide us in, the, in, in, in case they should come? I'm not letting you out of my sight. You can tie us up, lock us in, anything you want, but believe me, if they should come, you too will be in great danger. You are alone, aren't you? I can take care of myself. And Pat, too. Miss Rollins. Please. Gee, Dick, maybe they are telling the truth. I don't trust them, Pat. The boys will be in with a herd in the morning. We can lock them in the storeroom for the night. Now, one thing's for sure. With this storm, no one will be coming in or leaving this place tonight. Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, beg to differ. There's a car coming up the road right now. Take a look, Pat. Right. Recognize the car? No. It's a big black one. It's not Travis. You Stubborn food. Pat, get them back in the storeroom. Stay with them. I'll handle this. Now, hurry up. Okay. Will you give us back our guns? Shut up and get moving. Good afternoon. Can I have a word with you? Name's Tobin with the FBI. Come on in. You alone? Got two more in the car. Well, you better have them come in, too. This is going to last a while. Come on, boys! Wow, quite a storm. Yeah, you got her just in time. Uh, this is Mr. Uh, Fellows and Mr. Colby. How do you do? How do you do? You sit down, won't you? You here all alone? Well, for the time being. You say you were the FBI? That's right. Haven't seen anything of these two men, have you? Who are they? Kells and Stroberg? Who? Well, the two men who broke out of the penitentiary at Midville. The radio said they might be headed this way. Oh. Oh, them. No, no, we're not on that case. Now, that one there is a musician named Stefan Dona. The other one is his valet, a man called Rink. I see. Can I ask what you want them for? They're spies and very dangerous. They suspected Dona for a long time. Pat, bring them out. You mean you got them? Yes, we found them both. Well, good for you. Wonderful. Mr. Donner, the pleasure. You gave us quite a chase. How do you do, madam? This is my sister, Miss Rollins. I am Jim Tobin. This is Mr. Fellows and Mr. Colby. We're federal men. Now that we've got what we came for, we'll disturb you no more. Better put the cuffs on them, Colby. You won't be leaving here tonight. No? Why not? Every time we have a storm like this, the, the road gets washed down down by the river. You'll have to wait till morning. Well, since we are going to have to wait, I'd like to see your credentials, gentlemen. It is not every day that I get arrested by the FBI. That'll do, Donna. And what is the charge, may I ask? It's no good, Donna. We have the proof. The spionage to start, then murder. Is there a room where we can keep them quiet? Down the hall there. Show them, Pat. Mr. Tobin, may I see your credentials? Well, <laughs> what's the matter, Miss Rollins? Don't you trust us? Don't be a dope, Pat. I want to make sure that I'm not. May I see your credentials, please? Later, Miss Rollins. Take them back to... Right now, Mr. Tobin. Well, since you insist, this will have to do. Well, what the devil's the idea? Put that gun away. The idea is... That we've been a couple of prize idiots. What's the time, Ring? Just after three, sir. Mr. Donor, I, I just oh, wish Dick, that I... Don't apologize again. No, please don't. Had I been in your position, I'd probably have done the same thing. Mr. Rollins, it may be necessary to wreck a part of your home. But if we do it right, we may get out of here. I don't follow you. 
over there in the corner before it got too dark to see, I thought I saw a box labeled dynamite. Well, that's right, but may I congratulate you on having such a well-stocked storeroom? Across from this room is your office. Is that correct? Yes. And on the wall, I noticed a rifle. Is it loaded? Yes. The safety's on, but, but it's got eight shots in it. What's your plan? Ring here is quite an expert on the use of explosives. Right, sir. I'll rig the charge. All oh, you get as far down the room as you can. Pile up plenty of those battles as a barricade to get behind. As soon as the blast goes off, Mr. Donner will make a run for the rifle. The guard will be done for. The other two will be stunned by the blast. It should give him time. The rest of you lie low here. If he doesn't make it, I'll have a few sticks of dynamite, Andy, to take care of the other two. But you're taking all the rest. As Rink would say, a piece of cake. Let's get to work. Light the fuse, Rink. Everybody down. Hold on. He's over. I repeat, it's quite a surprise to see you, Richard. Oh, I'm just sorry I couldn't have been of help sooner. How's the shoulder? Mm. Miss Rollins is a wonderful nurse. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it took me some time to recover. You couldn't pick a better place to rest. I wonder... Won't they try again? Uh, we've released the whole story. Told everyone in the world who you really are and what you've been doing. You're a hero. Uh, <laughs> thank you. And so it ends, Richard. I am sorry. Well, I am, Stefan, because we're losing one of our best men. But I am glad it ended this way. <laughs> You'll live to a ripe old age. I can be of no more use not in the same way. Uh, but don't worry. You can be valuable in other ways. When you're on your feet again, uh, one of our people will get in touch with you. Well, I've got to be going. And uh, don't worry about any of them trying to come in here again. Them hills up there ain't just full of antelope, partner. <laughs> Goodbye, Seven. I'll come to one of your concerts someday. Mm. Did as you do, Richard. Stay a ring down by the corral trying to learn how to write. Take a bite in two, huh? I'll do that. So long, old man. You can use your arm again. Yes, Pat. I can use it. Time for your medicine. Who is that man? Friend, I will miss. You know, I've been two people for so long. It'll take some time before I get used to being myself again. Would you like to help me? Yes, Stefan. I'd like to help you. Good. Then perhaps I won't feel so badly about blowing up half your home. <laughs> Here, take your medicine. And then you've got a rest. <laughs> but it seems I go from one master to another. But I must admit, this should be a lot more pleasant. Star Paul Lucas will return for a word about next week's program in just a moment. I have an important message for intelligent young men, 
A new United States Army regulation now permits you to apply for OCS, Officer Candidate School, before you enlist. That's right. If you're at least 19 years old and can meet the physical and mental standards for Army officers, regardless of whether you're a high school graduate, you can go to your recruiting station and volunteer as an officer candidate. You will take basic training, attend leadership school, and go to the next available class at OCS. You'll be promoted to corporal when you go to OCS, and upon graduation, become a second lieutenant in the United States Army with good pay and allowances for food and quarters. Young American women have the same opportunity to become officers in the Women's Army Corps, but you'd better act now, for no one knows how long it'll be before our growing army has all the officers it needs. Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and get all the facts today. And now, here again is your host and star, Paul Lucas. It is a great pleasure for me to introduce the next star on Proudly We Hail, my good friend and one of America's foremost actors, Conrad Nagel. He joins you on these weekly dramatic programs beginning with next week's production. And speaking for myself, it has been a real pleasure being with you on these Proudly We Hail programs. And Pardon me, Mr. Lucas, but may I interrupt? Yes, Ken, of course. From all of us on Proudly We Hail, may we thank you for a splendid association. And speaking for the United States Army and the United States Air Force, may I say thanks for a job well done, for a real service to your country. Thank you, Ken. And may I say that it's been a real pleasure being with you all on Proudly We Hail, and I'll be listening each week from now on. And now, here is your next star on Proudly We Hail, whom you'll be hearing each week over this same station, the distinguished star on stage, screen, radio, and television, Mr. Conrad Nagel. Thank you, Paul. May I just say, ladies and gentlemen, it will be a great pleasure being with you on these Proudly We Hail programs, and I sincerely hope you'll continue to enjoy our programs. It's a great honor to join my friends Lee Tracy and Paul Lucas, whose past programs you've enjoyed so much. And, of course, being with our Army and Air Force is a privilege I'm very proud of. Until next week, then, this is Conrad Nagel speaking for Paul Lucas and your Army and Air Force, inviting you to be with us next week over the same station for Proudly We Hail. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail. We send it transcribed coast to coast in cooperation with this radio station by the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. The Last Trap was written by DeWitt Cup. Music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and was directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to be with us again next week over at the same station when Conrad Nagel stars on Proudly We Hail. Mm -hmm.